Hi guys, today I'll have to do a rebuttal of Suhail Seth's comments on Advaita Kala's podcast, which are strange at best and pure rubbish at worst. Now, first of all, a disclaimer that I respect Suhail Seth very much. He's probably the one of the best uh, public intellectuals of our generation, and he's very well read, very sane, very balanced, very civil, and not at all unfair in his arguments uh, almost ever. And he he's basically on our side. Uh, he's on the side of legality, civility, secularism, and true secularism. uh he he doesn't appease anyone but today his comments were very either irrelevant or he was being strangely uh contrarian and in his efforts of being a contrarian he made some stupid and meaningless comments uh i have made four specific uh i have i have gathered four specific uh, points that i want to rebut from his uh, which basically sums up his entire argument he went on a 5 to 6 minute rant and said all all these meaningless things and uh, to which i'll make uh, countless uh, rebuttals now let's see what his first point is i have repeatedly said including on the sunday club on your program that we need to keep religion out of public life Mm-hmm. we need religion where it belongs which is private okay his first point is that religion needs to be private now my first counter to that is no it should not be private you should be as public as you want while being in compliance with public health and public morality R- like jay sai deepak keeps saying my second point is here the issue isn't even that nupur sharma wasn't displaying her religion she wasn't engaging in a debate about which religion is better she was called to debate uh, an issue regarding a place of worship and deciding whether it's a place of worship or a place of prayer so unless suhel said is saying that the debates uh, on that debates on anything regarding religion should not happen on tv his argument so far does not make an ounce of sense my third point is that even if it was a debate on which on which religion is better uh, which would imply suhel said's point of that we are that she is displaying her religion even if that was the case that is completely acceptable We always have debates on atheism versus Christianity. People are making careers out of being atheist a- activist atheists while knowingly or unknowingly taking only Abrahamic line of arguments against all religions and and faith systems. Now to digress a little, uh, remember atheism like Marxism, feminism, liberalism, tolerance, secularism, all these came up as a movement uh, as a protest against Abrahamic orthodoxy or mostly Christian orthodoxy because you'll most likely be dead if you are an atheist in Bangladesh. Uh, but anyway, That's why atheists see all faith systems like as if they are an Abrahamic faith and hilariously most of their arguments against believers of god or a higher power are ident- identical to what islamic and christian colonizers said of indigenous faith systems in bharat north america south america africa etc especially against idolaters or idol worshipers see christians would enslave indigenous populations because they didn't have souls and how did they realize they don't have souls because they didn't have a god or holy book in accordance with christian standards how can a person who has a soul not have a god not have religion and all islamic invaders including muhammad and abraham himself destroyed all idols in order to prove that the believers of the deities inside those idols were stupid uh, because their deities can't even de- defend themselves meaning an atheist idea of a god is the same god as viewed by abrahamic faiths so atheists don't really understand the idea of a non abrahamic faith system So anyway now coming back to the point even if it was a de- debate between which religion or faith system is better that would also be highly acceptable because everyone could make better religious decisions based on those points uh, brought out by experts of the religions in the discussion because right now most people most peaceful secular muslims don't know what their own texts say and most anti hindu hindus don't have a clue about indic traditions so we could all get better educated if such debates happened they have because such anti hindu hindus have only read marxist interpretations of hindu traditions now let's see what his second argument is you know you you make comments you pass comments okay his second argument is that people end up passing comments when when such uh, debates happen so here my counter is that nupur sharma wasn't passing comments she was quoting shahi al bukhari 5134 and saying what if we make fun of what's written there the same way as you all have been disrespectfully calling a shivling a fountain what is the problem with that suhel said here curiously and interestingly uh, shows symptoms of an addiction to false equivalency this is the disease i have diagnosed with him i am his doctor right now i am his therapist and he really needs help suhel said is showing off addiction to false equivalency and then right after that he explains how he got that disease Watch this. Shondi and I both grew up, and I certainly did. I was born and raised in Calcutta. We never had issues 
where we discuss religion. Never. I cannot for the life of me, Advaita, remember when was the last time I asked someone, are you a Hindu? Are you a Christian? Are you a, a, a Muslim? Yeah. It came into our being. So this is his argument that he was born in Calcutta where he never discussed religion and uh, he never asked anybody's religion, which is a strawman argument, but I'll come, come back to that later. So even in 2022, Suhail said is pretending to not understand the side effects of being a society that does not discuss religion. And the second issue is that no one anywhere in India asks religion of random people and then starts talking to people. Like, for example, you you went for jogging in a park and someone is uh, coming right uh, beside you to sit down on the park bench and you say, Hey bro, are you Hindu? Okay, go ahead, sit. Oh, you Muslim? Hai? Chal nikal se. That's not how normal conversations work in anywhere in India, uh, in no secular nation like India. And uh, but only uh, Bengalis and Cal- people from Calcutta have this uh, haughty h a h a u g h t y haughty haughty the sense that uh, on- they are the only people who don't ask religion of a person. But that is a hilarious stra- strawman argument that Suhail said gives you. Okay, uh, the problem is that uh, he thinks like all other Calcuttans that it Calcutta is the Vatican of irreligiosity, except when repeatedly Hindus get killed and also non-Marxists get killed by official Marxists and Marxists get killed for not being leftist enough. For example, uh, TMC, Trinamool. How did they come to power? They outlefted the left and they came to power democratically, which means the society and culture that Suhail said is glorifying for, for discussing Satyajit Ray and some random Eurocentric white Christian male thinker. That society decided that the official communist party is not leftist enough for them and want something further left. <clears throat> Even though the same society turned a blind eye to the communist atrocities in Marijjhapi, Netai, Bijan Shetu, massacre of Anand Margis uh, and, and Shaibari massacre where they fed, fed, okay my mic is acting up, uh, in, in the Shaibari massacre where they fed rice soaked blood uh, with blood of the son to the mother because they were apparently part of the, that family was part of the bourgeoisie. And did it before Yasin Malik did, in, did it in Kashmir. What you what you saw in Kashmir files, that was done by communists in Shaibari years before that. I think about in 82 or 84. Okay. That secular society kept voting for the perpetrators of this violence, of these violences. And then decided we need someone further left because screw industry. Save the farmers. Even if farmers themselves want better living standards by having a factory come up in their locality. But that secular society decided it for the farmers. These are the people that my favorite economist Thomas Sowell talks about as the unaccountable third-party experts that never pay a price for being wrong. Uh, read the, hear the sentence again and you'll understand the depth of what Thomas Sowell is talking about. So, uh, anyway, then that further left Green Party started doing its own share of atrocities on the lesser leftists and put minority appeasement on steroids, which was started by the leftists before them. But uh, Trinamool did it uh, way better. Uh, while while going on being a society that doesn't discuss religion. Okay, remember that. All the while, they are a society that doesn't discuss religion and doesn't ask people's religions. Look up the details of minority appeasement in Bengal if you don't know already. Because they are in so many, so many forms and layers and sometimes subtle and sometimes not subtle that I won't be able to explain uh, all of them in one video and definitely not in this video. Okay, then the further left Green Party unleashed pure hell on Hindu supporters of a so-called pro-Hindu party, which has led most of them to either end up dead or run off to Assam, where they still live as refugees. People from Bengal, right after 20, 2021 poll violence. Okay, this points to the larger issue of the addiction to false equivalency, from which a lot of Indians, and but mostly Bengalis suffer. What the f- hell is the problem with my mic? Uh, okay, Bengalis suffer from this problem called uh, addiction to fal- false equivalency, where you have to view everything through the lens of equality. Nothing is better or worse. Nothing is too bad or too good. Everything is kind of equal, you know. Uh, so, uh, and, and even I suffer from that. Make no mistake. I cannot say good things about any MMA fighter. I'm a huge MMA fan. I can't make good good points about an MMA fighter without saying something good about another MMA fighter. So I don't do that in, the, in terms of culture and politics, but Bengalis do that in everything. So, uh, there's a deep, irresistible urge among us Bengalis to not take sides, okay? Uh, because they fear it will hurt. We fear it will hurt the side that we are not taking. Even if we say, like, uh, I like apples, we have to add that some oranges are also good. 
they think someone doing well in life automatically implies someone is not doing well in life which is essentially a result of marxist brainwashing that bengalis have faced for four generations for them everything is a zero sum game everyone is either a winner or loser they 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 can't fathom the situation that maybe everything is getting overall better for somebody okay notice notice how it's a stupid binary way of thinking that has its roots in both their marxist heritage both by their i mean ours by uh, uh, in in our bengali marxist heritage which is essentially a secular abrahamism and as well as the fact that bengal has lived for a long time under muslim rule and uh, has has shared its land with a muslim majority population until until independence so abrahamic coloniality has plagued our minds which probably also explains our obsession with resorting to violence at the drop of a hat uh, professor in a college said something danga ho gaya opposite student opposition student party does something danga ho gaya raste mein danga ho gaya opposition student leader says something police goes and kills a, kills a guy while at the same time being a secular society that does not discuss religion also important to remember that people who are fit or trained in combat sports and actually understand the possible results of a physical confrontation never engage in physical confronta- confrontations okay which is probably another reason for the bengali obsession with physical violence in the streets because it's an extremely physically weak and unfit population possibly most unfit in the entire country now let's look at his fourth uh, argument and his last argument from his uh, strange rant now the problem is when you start talking about these things everyone has an opinion and when people have an opinion as narayan murthy famously said as long as you disagree it's fine but when you become disagreeable it's not fine okay here is another false equivalency that bringing up the issue that uh, people become disagreeable while discussing religion and my counter has to be that again here this has nothing to do with nupur sharma nor hindus in 99% of the times because everyone knows who is being and who keeps being disagreeable nupur sharma is not being disagreeable and it's definitely not the side that has been at the receiving end of genocides forced conversions and temple theft and is merely taking uh, legal and civil routes to reclaim their heritage and then facing further brunt for debating issues and quoting religious texts word for word in a mainstream tv debate <laughs> 